thank you guys all so much for all your support. We're at 4.1K subs, which is crazy. I didn't know that this many people would be this interested in this car, but you guys deserve a burnout. to another video and this one i'm going to be diving into something that i've been dreading for a while because it's snowing outside so and it's going to be snowing all day today and all day tomorrow so i'm hoping i can get this transmission dropped out of this car change the rear main seal change all the seals in the transmission like the output shaft input shaft seal the shifter seal because i've never changed them on this transmission i don't know why i just didn't know they existed so i'm doing all that because it is drenched drenched with oil under the car under the transmission and it makes me so mad every time i see it but before everything i want to make sure that the back of the valve cover isn't leaking so much into there just because it could happen i forgot that i have to take the intake manifold off so that you can get the starter out to take the transmission off oh it's so much more work now oh that sucks <laughs> Hey, that's part of having a project car. I was able to get this light behind there and I can see that it's dry. There's nothing wet, so the valve cover is not the problem. It's definitely coming for the rear main because there's so much oil. I hate this, by the way. I want to redo this when I take the next time I take the coolant out. I put a piece of bare metal <laughs> two years ago in here to block this off and it's still rusting there. So I can see that it's all dry behind the oil filter housing so it's oh actually but it's so wet on top of the oil pan what if it's all leaking from the dipstick because there's so much on my skid plate down there and look at this i want to see something really funny if i grab this and pull up a little bit oh it used to just pop out but now i guess it's not popping out a little less ape like I only like jacking this car up from the front subframe just because it always feels the safest and the easiest in this small ass garage. So, I need a lift, y'all. This is so annoying. Always make sure if you're going under it, if you're doing anything big, it's not gonna fall off. This is why I want to pull the trans. It's all just caked on. That's all oil burned into my exhaust right here. And to all of that is just, oh, and then up here, it gets brutal. Look at this. And then here, oh, it's all. But the thing that's weird, this frame rail is completely dry. Also, I don't recommend you putting your flex pipe on the bottom of the car. If I redo this exhaust, I'm going to put that flex pipe on the coming down section right up there. Because this scrapes coming into my driveway every single time. Like I was saying, the oil over here, it's covering this frame rail. And that control arm is completely drenched. The subframe is completely drenched. So it might not be the rear main. The skid plate is also disgusting. So like oil is coming from somewhere and it might not be the rear main. Okay, so I got a quick theory. I used one of these from Harbor Freight for my oil dipstick O-ring. And I think because of that, I don't know why I did that. Honestly, it's such a cheap gasket. I don't remember why, I just remember that I did it. When I check above the level of that right here where this sits in front, there's like no really, there's no real oil anywhere. A little bit above, not much. Here it's dry. And then it's all running down around the pan onto the steering rack, onto the front subframe, onto the control arm. Train rail is coated in oil all the way where that jack stand is. The control arm bushing is soaked. 
and it's all going back through here all the way back onto the exhaust over there so i'm gonna pull that dipstick out just see what is there see if there even is an o-ring because imagine i pull the trains out change everything and it was just this o-ring i don't know if the oil level is above where the dipstick sits so i just took the dipstick out put it right next to it yeah so the oil level definitely does not come up past that so i should be able to replace this without draining the oil I'm gonna clean it all off now before though. Spray brake clean literally everywhere and get it all off. So I can change it and then see if it, that's actually the problem. So I'm about to just start violating with this. Now I can come in and wipe everything down. Wow, that looks so much better. Everything's clean. I don't know how well you can see it, but everything's covered in oil. Oh. It's like an eraser. I'm just deleting. Please come off the exhaust. Make sure to do that in well-ventilated areas because I feel high as hell after doing that now. So <laughs> I gotta take a break and come back to this. Not much really came off the exhaust, but everything else is finally way cleaner. And everything is looking like how it was supposed to look. This is all clean in here. And here too is all clean. Everything on the oil pan, all these lines, finally. So I'm gonna pop this dipstick out it's like so loose look at how i listed the dipstick tube up and down and it actually took the o-ring out with it and it is one of those hard ass harbor freight o-rings i don't know why i thought that that would seal but now this is hitting at the intake manifold up top now this little thing <laughs> is hitting on the manifold here we go Damn, that go <laughs> I didn't know it was that long, but I just so happened I ordered one of these because I knew that I did this, but I didn't know that it was, <laughs> this is, the seal is so hard. Like, I don't know why I thought that this was a good idea. With that oil that's already on my finger, I could just cover it in oil so that it doesn't tear on its way in. Someone on the forum says that if you just put the O-ring a little bit on there and then just guide the tube in so the tube is in a little bit and then with a little screwdriver, you try and seat it all the way down. That's like the best way to go. So I'm gonna try and do that. And then if worse comes to worse, I'll hammer it in from the top because I wanna try and avoid hammering it so that I don't tear the O-ring because I really don't wanna do this again, but you know. It was actually a lot easier to get in than I thought it would be. So now I'm gonna go down there with a little screwdriver and try and pry it in. So the objective is gonna be just to take the O-ring and kind of like push it in around the sides like that. I'm not using the sharp side at all. So the O-ring is kind of seated. So I'm just gonna slightly tap it. I'm gonna gently persuade it with a piece of wood and... There, we go. I felt it. Hopefully everything is good down there. Yep, it's sitting in there. You can see that it's below the level. Hopefully it shouldn't leak now. As long as I mount the dipstick, I think I won't have any issues now because it's still a little floppy. You can hear all that movement that it has. So definitely wanna make sure it's all the way down and then get it mounted. It's really hard to see everything, but right where my middle finger is, there's a bolt hole. I'm gonna make a little bracket to come just straight off of here and straight down into right here, the dipstick. And also yesterday when I was driving the car, I saw smoke coming out of the catch can. Maybe it's cause it was like 20 degrees, but I'm hoping there's nothing in here. Ooh. Oh shit, there actually is some oil in there. There's a pretty good amount of oil in there. When I was running it at 10 pounds, it was empty. Oh my God. It's <laughs> I feel like that's a lot of oil, what the hell? So this happened after we upped the boost because before when I was running at 10 pounds, there was nothing in here. Just as a quick note, this is kind of scary to me because when 
I watch a lot of YouTube videos and no one ever mentions how much blow by they get or how quickly it fills up. So I have nothing to base it off of. <laughs> and I want to show stuff like this so that you guys know exactly what goes into a project and not just the good stuff. So you get to see the good and the bad. Took a piece of the Coke box, cut it and made it to shape. This is where the dipstick hole is lined up with the bottom hole over here. So it's gonna be bolted right here. And then the dipstick is gonna be right down where that Sharpie mark is at the bottom, snug up right here. And the dipstick will be sitting nice and out of the way, mounted fully. I only have between this thin ass, I think 22 gauge, and then like eighth inch steel, which that's really thick. I wanna try and make it out of this piece, but if it's too flimsy, then I'll make it out of the bigger one. Mark, do I want to bend it? It's so flimsy, I don't even know if it's gonna <laughs> hold anything. So now, it's kind of really flimsy, but this is bolted in up here. You can see, once I have this bolted in, I think this will be enough play just so that it doesn't move. Right in the middle of where that bracket is. I want to paint this and then put a riv nut in it right there so I could just put this bolt, run it through and just have it be nice and easy like that. I'm going to paint it before doing that though. Oh god. Now I'm just going to let this sit in front of the heater for a little bit because it's still 30 degrees in here. This is the bracket all painted now. I'm going to take this M6 riv nut and blaster on. Let's see how well this really thin material takes this. Oh my God, what the hell was that? Bro, what? Did I just... Oh God, this is way too thin of material for this. So that was me pulling the threads out of the insert. I thought it had to be even, like, just clamp it until it was even like this. One side was clamped and the other was like that. So I just squeezed it and pulled the threads out. Oh, I don't know. I guess this stripped because threads on the insert are fine. I already had the nut on. Now we're good. By the way, this is what the riv nut looks like. Flat on the back and... So there it is, it's pretty hard to see because it goes from right here and then it goes behind that little black piece right down to here. It was really flimsy outside, but honestly, I'm happy with how little that can move. I would definitely use a thicker gauge metal if I was to do this again, but I'll, this is all I had. She's good, I just wanted it to not move so that the seal stays in place. And I can actually pull it up and not pull it out of the pan which is also a big thing. Now I'm just gonna take this thing out and drain it. Oh, sh Huh? It's like water. Could it actually be water? That didn't look like oil. I gave it a good ass whiff and it smells like straight fuel, so I guess it's mixing fuel in, because I know that it's common with E85, I just didn't know it happened with pump gas. Now the next thing I need to take care of is all these full containers of used engine oil. <laughs> I need to bring them and recycle it because this is getting ridiculous. And that's all of it. So after driving the car around, there's oil on the pan again. But the weird thing is, it's kind of like dry, like I'm touching right here where the, I was expecting this to be wet and it's not really that wet for the amount of oil that's down here. And then I can see a little bit on the bottom of the oil filter housing, there's some drips, which is really annoying. So <laughs> there's oil coming out of there. It must be going down and onto the power steering. And then there's more, more oil down here, back over here. And again, on the bottom of the transmission, there's oil. Again, so maybe the rear main is leaking. I don't, oh my 
God, I don't know what to do and I don't. So it seems like everything is leaking on this fresh rebuild that I use new gaskets on everything and torque specs on everything. So this is so annoying. <laughs> Only thing I'm low key kind of scared about is if I take the transmission out and it's leaking from the pan. It's leaking between the pan and the actual plate that's between there, which that'll be a nightmare because then I would like have to take the whole oil pan out to redo everything. I'm not going to take the transmission out to redo the rear main and everything because it is dripping a little bit, but I feel like something is going to break before then. So I'm just going to let it ride out. This is after like a week of the car sitting. I haven't touched this car in so long, but yeah, I fixed the big leak. I think that was doing the most damage, but I still feel like I'm not, <laughs> I don't know. I still feel unhappy with this but hey that's the name of the game sometimes stuff doesn't go the way you want it to go so i'm just gonna forget that that ever happened i fixed it a little bit i ordered a new fuel pump deech works dw 300 because the one that's in it right now is an amazon 255 liter per hour which i looked it up and i didn't even know it was rated for up to 500 horsepower and this is rated for between 800 and 1,000 on gas and 600 horsepower on E85. So I got this fuel pump because I don't want to ever change it again. And it's a universal kit. It has the sock and everything. I'm pretty sure I just have to solder this into the fuel pump assembly. It comes with everything I need. Now I just need to take the old fuel pump out of the car. Quick release rear seat, you see that? I'm gonna take the fuel pump fuse out because I don't want the system being under pressure. Gotta make sure this thing's in neutral before some disaster happens. Just to get the fuel pressure down. When I was driving with a full tank with this rear seats off, I saw that gas was leaking from under this. And it has to be from this flattened O-ring. So I'm gonna get a new one of these before putting this back in. Also, I really wanna see if this connector that I already have on it is gonna work for this pump. This thing is tiny. <laughs> Compared to this old 255, this thing's really small. I like it. Oh, it does work. So I don't need to wire it in. The heat shrink on this, I forgot how I connected it. I think I soldered it, I can't really remember. It's like that, I think it should be fine. Let me know what you guys think because you guys, <laughs> you guys know a lot more than I do. But yeah, this fuel pump is rated for up to 500 is what they say and it's an Amazon fuel pump and I'm making 515 so. I think there's no reason that I shouldn't have one of these in there or at least something that flows a lot more than what I'm pushing. The best that I can really put it is like this. This isn't gonna really be able to sit in there and I don't know if it's a good idea to rat, like hose clamp this to this f housing. This is the part that's kind of sus to me. I guess I just need to push this on and then take this little clip and shove it on and force it in. Little four mil socket that I'm gonna use to hit this spring thing on. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm fucked. It's not like a week later because I got tight that I lost this. This was a $27 error. I had to buy a whole new installation kit. It came with a new filter, so now I have two filters just for that one little spring, but at least they gave me two this time. I almost put this in my gas tank with this little Dietschworks plastic thing in. This 100% would have gotten destroyed by the gas. I got an actual hard hammer this time with the 4 mil, and I just hammered it on. I knew that it's not what you're supposed to do, but I didn't think it was going to fly off. <laughs> And that's what it looks like. It's like gouged into the plastic. So everything is good. I'm gonna assume that that's how it's supposed to go. And I could just put it back in. So now that this is kind of the finished product, 
I don't know if this is actually a good idea or not. I tried looking it up and couldn't really get much answers, but I'm using one of these ties off of the exhaust wrap for this and hopefully it'll be good. I don't really know if this is a good idea to how hard mount it. So now it's just as easy as putting it all back together. I'm gonna turn the key on and I wanna see how loud it is too. Jesus. So now the back seat is in. It's still screaming. <laughs> to the car there's like an ear piercing whine and I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera but I think that's why it's probably a bad idea to hard mount the fuel pump right to the hangar because it's whining like crazy and it's ear piercing from even back over here so much for watching the reason why i was saying it's so fast now because i edited the video fully is because i watch a lot of youtubers drift and i never really put into perspective how fast they're going so like when jimmy grabbed third and pointed it at the wall i'm just like 
<laughs> I was so stuck because that car only makes like 235 horsepower, he said. So I didn't think that a car with that low horsepower could get thrown that, you know, it was, it just caught me so off guard. But hopefully I can bring this thing to the next drift event because I really want to drive. So I appreciate you guys getting to this far and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.